All right. Well, Sarah Ann, it has been an explosive season of Love is Blind, to say the least. And last night's reunion was even wilder than we could have expected. Now, just as a viewer, I feel like I could feel the tension as you walked in the room. So talk to us about how you were feeling as soon as you arrived and as we all witness after being like kind of iced out by the girls. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. I I had a lot of angst walking out on stage, of course, and um, just just given the situation between Laura and I, and and like you had mentioned, being iced out, I I really did feel that way. Um, so I kind of did have my guard up, <laughs> uh, to say the least, because I didn't know what to expect. Um, however, I gave myself a little pep talk before I actually walked out on stage, and I was like, you know what, like you know who you are, you know the truth go out, answer the questions and walk out with a bang. So I would be lying if I said that I wasn't anxious. Yeah. And there is a whole scene. A lot of people are talking about it, social media about the whole pick me girl conversation. Oh gosh. Yeah. A lot of, from the other girls. So I would just like to hear a little bit more from your side. Um, you said, you know, there were a lot of things that were said in the pods about you that we maybe yeah. didn't see on camera with the girls, with Laura. So just kind of talk us through that. Yeah. I'm so glad you asked. Um, and this is something that, you know, I've obviously kept to myself for a long time because I don't want to slander anyone or speak for anyone. But as you know, the show was actually filmed about a year ago. And since then, Jeremy and I have worked on our relationship and we've talked a lot about the experiment and um, worked through things as a couple. We touched on some of the conversations that he was having with Laura um, in the pods, one in specific, the night before he actually broke up with me, I had my date um, with him. It was approximately three hours. And then Laura, she went into her date. Um, she was talking very ill of me from, you know, Jeremy's perspective um, that I had tons of other connections and that I was in love with other people and so on and so forth. So in my opinion, when I said, you're the pick me, um, <laughs> that came from a really deep spot because I was like, you in the lounge in the pod days were actually talking bad about me in order to get picked. And that's, that's the way I look at that. I, I stand by the fact that I never went into a pod and, and talked ill of another woman because that was, that's not something I wanted to do. Right. I think I even said in on the show that, or to AD, I was like, you know, I want to be picked for who I am. So it would do my, I would be doing myself a disservice if I said, well, this girl said this, that, and the third, just so that someone would choose me to marry me. Um, so that's, that's what I meant by that. And, and, you know, just uh, beings that I did feel iced out and kind of bullied throughout the entire show. I I've come to realize that that's, that's probably a very true statement. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's all I meant by that is that I felt that that was more pick me energy than than sending a, a, a direct message. I'm sure when you signed on to do the show, you never envisioned that you would be painted as the villain. So talk to us again about some of the conversations you and Jeremy had that didn't make it onto TV and maybe would have changed how the public perceived you guys and your relationship. Yeah, absolutely. There was a brief conversation that you see a small part of it where Jeremy is talking to me about, you know, hey, where would we live? And and what would our I think the, the what you do see is what would our Saturday look like? But there were a lot of in-depth conversations uh, surrounding, you know, the passing of his father and how he felt in that moment. And, you know, just a lot of emotion from my end. And, um, you know, having not been through that myself, I was just trying to be very understanding of someone that I was falling in love with. Right. And I think that that is a very deep um, conversation. It builds a very strong connection with someone, especially when someone becomes so vulnerable with you. So there were, you know, I mentioned that on the reunion to Vanessa, I said, you know, it's unfortunate that we don't see a lot of those conversations. And, um, you know, I think I think it's also just based off of our energy and and seeing that on the opposite sides of the pods, like the laughter and, you know, some of the funny conversations. So I think that realistically, at the end of the day, the conversations that we didn't get to see were those heartfelt, you know, 
tears flowing um, and, and just that really strong connection that we built with each other. Thank um, you. I know you mentioned at the reunion that you were not speaking with any of the girls at the time. Has anything changed since that aired? No, in fact, um, I, I haven't had any communication with them for over a year. And again, you know, like I mentioned, uh, the focus is the relationship. I went on the show when I signed the, that paperwork, it was I'm going here to meet someone that I could potentially marry. You know, I have a ton of great girlfriends and my loyalty is to them. I am a girl's girl. They're my girls. And there's so much support there. But when I went on the show, it was to meet the love of my life, you know, or potentially meet the love of my life. And so um, once I realized that there was a lot of conversations in the lounge and I mean, you can see it in the early episodes where Laura and AD are, are not talking nice about me. And so, um, I think AD mentioned in an interview, like I was so hurt and, and X, Y, Z, because we were friends, but in my mind and from my perspective, I'm going, we were never friends. You were never my friend. Um, again, you can see that it's very clear. And I don't have any ill will against any of the women I think all of them have something special to offer I think that um you know it's really sad the way that this unfolded but I got what I came for you know that's that's the reality of it and um I was I out of a group chat within weeks of coming back and the deleting of everyone off Instagram was because I'm like well why do you need to see into my life into my relationship if you don't care for me if you don't want me to be your friend there's no reason for you for us to be friends on face or uh, on uh, Instagram and um you know I it, and it's it's truly from the female castmates the bullying and the attacks are from them and the male cast never you know obviously to interact with them as much and so it just you know and Jeremy's friends with a lot of them so the the not deleting the the male castmates and and deleting the female was truly because of that and I'm like you know well they didn't do anything to me so and that's just full transparency but um but yeah sad but at the same time I have the greatest girlfriends in the world and I I wouldn't want it any other way so and we covered a lot, but before I let you go, is there anything else that you didn't get to say on the reunion that you want to clear the air up on? Yeah, I mean, um, there was, I really felt compelled to speak out and just, um, I wanted to say, I actually wanted to say to Chelsea because I noticed early on that she was getting a lot of hate um, regarding her comment about, you know, the Megan Fox comparison and Chelsea is gorgeous. I, I think that um, I said it in one of my TikTok videos that you don't have to look like Megan Fox to be beautiful. I mean that. And again, um, although it's very apparent that myself and the other castmates don't necessarily agree on a whole lot or how things were done, I have I have nothing but well wishes to send them. And um, I, But I also maintain that I am a strong individual. I'm going to stand up for what I believe in and I'm going to fight for myself. Um, because if I don't, uh, nobody else will. 